piece of the 12 so y'all see the title man proving the israelites with the bible only say that one more time proving the israelites with the bible only and yeah it's pretty easy to prove the identity of us right and i've done this several times uh via various videos like you know y'all see them on the screen ancient modern hebrews yada yada right and there are good videos and there are a lot of historical evidence there are a lot of maps there's a lot of um, personal testimonies of people that were living in the 1700s, so, so on and so forth, that talk about the identity of the Israelites. But I've talked to a lot of people since I've been in this truth, and I've been in this truth probably probably like five years, something like that. I, I really don't remember it anymore. But um, And I've had conversations with certain people, and they're like, oh, man, I don't even need that. They'll say, I just need the Bible, right? And they're actually correct. You could prove our identity with only the Bible, right? And that's what we're going to be touching on in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I really only need three points to prove our identity. That being complexion, comparisons, and curses, right? And I have curses, I have curses um, in red font because I'm not really going to be touching on curses. For this video, I actually would rather do a video on the curses in of itself by itself right i want to do a video on the curses by itself so i'm not going to be touching on the curses but we're going to be touching on comparisons and complexion we're first going to touch on comparisons because i think that's the most uh important part to prove our identity so let's go to the comparisons part so one of the one of the things the israelites are compared to really there's two i'm going to be focused on this video which are the egyptians and the ethiopians and the first thing we're going to be touching on there are Israelites named after Ethiopians, right? So this is a comparison, right? As a matter of fact, the prophet Zephaniah, right, who has his own book written after him in the Bible, the book of Zephaniah. Well, the prophet Zephaniah, his father's name, you can see it right here. I didn't highlight it, but I'm about to. His father's name was Cushi, right here in the very bottom, bottom right corner. Zephaniah's father's name was Cushi. For those of you who don't know, Cushi is another word. Another way of saying Kush, and it's another word of another way of saying Ethiopian. So let's get that and continue on. So we go to Zephaniah one and one. It reads, "The word of the Lord Yahweh, which came unto Zephaniah the son of Cushi, son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah." So Zephaniah is the son of Cushi. Right now, when we go to this word, the word Cushi. And it's, it's mentioned multiple times in the scriptures in 2 Samuel, Jeremiah, as well as Zephaniah. This word, Cushi, right here, Kusi, Kushi, right, means their blackness, Cushi, right? Name of two Israelites, Cushi, Kushi, right? So it means their blackness, right? Signifying blackness, right? Now, Cushi is another word of saying Ethiopian. Look at this, outline of biblical usage. And let me say this too, if I didn't say it earlier in the beginning of the video. Only thing I'm gonna be using in this video is really uh, the Bible and I'm gonna go into concordances and things in the blue letter, you know, which y'all can look up. So, Cushy is the name of two Israelites. It also signifies, it also means their blackness. And for those that don't know Cushy, it says Cushy or Ethiopian. So Cushy is just another way of saying Ethiopian. See Cushion their blackness one of the descendants of cush the grandson of noah through ham and a member of that nation of people right so cushy synonymous with ethiopian cushy cushite ethiopian ethiopians right so zephaniah who was an israelite his father was named cushy which means their blackness and cushy is another way of saying ethiopian right let's keep going cushy all right cushite the cushite um Sufficient Cushy, proper name, Cushites among the Israelites, yeah, yeah. Cushy, properly the Cushite, the Ethiopian, a man apparently attached to Joab's person. So, and even in this Wikipedia and other things, it says Cushy or Cushy. It's look at this Cushy, generally used in the Hebrew Bible to refer to a dark-skinned person of African descent. See the Greek Ethiops, right? Or Ethiopes. The word cushy or cushy is generally used in the Hebrew Bible to refer to a dark skinned person of African descent, equivalent to the Greek Ethiopes. Right? 
what color were the Kushites? Blackness, Kushites, smooth skin, right? And also, Jacob was a smooth skin man, which I didn't include in this video. But I've done another video on that at, uh, at other times. I've done videos on that already. But um, I think the video I did was called, what, Two Manner of People or Two Nations of People, something like that. Well, I went into that. But um, anyway, so that's one, Cushy. So you had an Israelite who was named Cushy, right, which goes back to the Ethiopians. That's a comparison. And also, you have another Israelite who was a Benjamite of the tribe of Benjamin out of the 12 tribes of Israel who was named Cush. We already know Cush goes back to the Ethiopians as well. So we're going to go to Psalms chapter 7 and verse 1. Shagion of David, which he sang unto the Lord Yahweh concerning the words of Cush, the Benjamite. O Lord Yahweh, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. So you had a Benjamite named Cush, right? Cush equals black. It was a Benjamite. And Cush, the people descended from Cush, son of Ham, southmost pe south, southernmost peoples of located in Africa. Um, yeah, so you got that. Again, Cush, which once again signifies black. And you had a Benjamite named Cush. You know why? Spoiler alert, it's because he was black. A so-called black man. Right, look at this. Cush, Cushion, Cushy, Ethiopians, blackness. All synonymous. Cush, black, a Benjamite. Right? So we got the name part out of there. Now we're going to go to the fact that the Bible even directly compares the Israelites to the Ethiopians at some point. The Bible even directly compares the Israelites to the Ethiopians at some point. Right? You can read about that in Amos chapter 9 and verse 7. Where it reads, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord Yahweh? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaphtor, and the Syrians from Kerr? So right there, directly, the children of the Ethiopians are compared unto the children of Israel. He says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Let's go to other versions of Amos 9 and 7 and other versions. NIV. Are not you Israelites the same to me as the Cushites, declares the Lord. Are ye, English Standard Version, are ye not like the Cushites to me, O people of Israel? Are ye not like the Cushites to me, O children of Israel? You know, so on and so forth. So that is a straight up comparison to the Israelites, right? And on top of that, Abraham, let me see if I'm still recording. One second. Bet. And on top of that, Abraham is a descendant of the Chaldeans, which is modern-day Iraq or Iraq. The Chaldeans, for those of you that don't know, the Chaldeans are descended from the Ethiopians who mingled themselves among the Akkadians. And I'm going to prove that in the Bible. So this is something that's very important, right? I can prove that in the Bible. So let's go back to Cush. Let's go back to Cush. Genesis 10 and 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and Canaan, right? So one of the sons of Ham was Cush. That's where you get Ethiopia. We went over that, right? So that's an Ethiopian. Now check this out. Cush had a son. His son's name was Nimrod. That's in Genesis 10 and 8, which I'm about to get. Uh, Genesis 10 and 8. And Cush begat Nimrod, meaning that's his son. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord Yahweh, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord Yahweh. So, Cush's son was Nimrod. Why is that important? I'll explain. We're going to go to here. It says, Cush, this is the Eastern Bible Dictionary. It says, Cush, black. We're going to go into here. In the country no, now known to us as Nubia and Abyssinia, in ancient Egyptian descriptions, Ethiopia is termed Kesh, the Cushites. Now, check this out. This is very important. This is very important. This shows the expansion of the Cushites, meaning they went into the land of the Middle East, particularly Iraq or Iraq, however you want to pronounce it. They went in there, they mingled among the people, and they formed empires, right? Like Babylon, right? Like Syria. Anyway, it says the Cushites appear to have spread along extensive tracts, stretching from the upper Nile to the Euphrates and Tigris. And in an early period, there was a stream of migrations of Cushites from Ethiopia. See that? Properly so-called through Arabia, Babylonia, and Persia, and Western India. Babylonia is the important part. Babylon, right? That's uh, with Nimrod. That's where we go back to Nimrod, which we'll go down to here. Check this out. 
It says, Nimrod was a great Cushite chief. Check this out. He conquered the Akkadians, a Tyrrhenian race, already settled in Mesopotamia, and founded his kingdom. The Cushites mingled with the Akkads and so forming the Chaldean nation. Right? So it was the Cushites, particularly Nimrod, who was an Ethiopian. This Ethiopian man is the man who is responsible for forming the Chaldean nation. Now, like I told you earlier, um, Abraham was a descendant of the Chaldeans, right? So let's go into this even more. So, so Nimrod, who was an Ethiopian, formed the Chaldean nation. Well, guess what? Abraham was a Chaldean. We'll go into that. So, even you ask Google, where was Abraham from? The Bible says that Abraham was raised in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abraham, he was a Chaldean. Did you know that Abraham was born a Chaldean but died a Hebrew? So Abraham was a Chaldean. Mind you, uh, the Chaldeans were created by an Ethiopian man known as Nimrod when he conquered the Akkadians. Now, let's, and Abram, his name was changed to Abraham. Y'all pretty much already know that. Y'all can read Genesis 15 for that. Now we're going to go to Genesis 11 and 31 where it states, And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came into Haran and dwelt there. Right? So they're from the child, they're Chaldeans. They're from the Chaldees. Um, Nehemiah 9 and 7 speaks on that as well. Nehemiah 9 and 7. Thou art the Lord, Yahweh the God, who didst choose Abram and brought us him forth of Ur of the Chaldees and gave us him the name Abraham. So Abram and Abraham. They're the same person. And again, they're from the land of the Chaldees. Let's continue. Right? So this is important. Um, and this talks about how they were in idolatry. Yeah, because they were serving the Chaldean gods prior to Abraham being chosen by the Most High. Right? And let's read that in Joshua chapter 24. In verse 1. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh God of Israel, your fathers dwell on the other side of the flood in the old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. So Abraham's father, Terah, and those that were before him, they served other gods. Particularly, they were obviously serving the Chaldean gods because they were in the Chaldean area. But check this out. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led them throughout, led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. So originally Abraham again was a Chaldean. So let's continue. Terah, this is the father of Abraham, right? He had three sons, Haran, Nahor, and Abraham. One daughter, Sarah. He settled Ur of Chaldees. He says, the descendants of this Chaldean shepherd have played in the history of the world. So they were Chaldeans, right? And once again, just, 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 just in case y'all forgot, Nimrod was the great Kushite chief who formed the Chaldean nation. And Nimrod was what? Yes, Nimrod was an Ethiopian, right? So let's go even further to prove that, again, the Israelites are descended from the Chaldeans. Um, you read about that in Judith 5 and 6, found in the Apocrypha, which was originally part of the 1611 King James Bible. It's also in other versions as well. Um, I've done a video on why you should read the Apocrypha. But anyway, so we're going to go to Judith chapter 5, verse 6, on down to 10. And it's going to say again that they're descended from the Chaldeans. This people, this is Judith 5 and 6, this people are descended of the Chaldeans, right? Descended meaning they share a common ancestor. And they journeyed here. Here to four in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods and they fled into Mesopotamia. And sojourned there many days. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned and to go into the land of Canaan where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and with very much cattle. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there while they were nourished and became there a great multitude so that one could not number their nation. This is talking about the Israelites. And notice they're descended from the Chaldeans. 
and their fathers were in the land of Chaldea. Right? And I'll even show you all a picture of the Chaldeans and compare them to the Ethiopians of today. Right? So this is what they say the Chaldeans look like. Close up. Right? Now here you have the Aromo tribe of Ethiopia. All right? This same hairstyle and even beard is still around. Right? This is the Aromo Ethiopian tribe. They have the same hairstyle as these Chaldeans. Right? Right? Let's do a comparison. This is a Ethiopian woman. This is a Chaldean close-up. They have the same headdress. Right? Clear as day. But anyway, so that's the Ethiopian part of comparison. Now we're going to go to the Egyptian part of comparison. And then we're going to go to the complexion at the end of this video. So, now for the next comparison. Let me see if I'm still recording. Yes. Now for the next comparison, the Israelites were compared to the ancient Egyptians. Correct. And I've already done videos proving that the ancient Egyptians were so-called black people. I'm not going to go into that th again this time. Instead, we're going to just say, for argument's sake, let's say that there's some people that say, oh, no, the uh, uh, the ancient Egyptians look like brown-skinned, so-called Arab-looking people, right? Other people say they're black, and yeah, they were black, and the Arabs came. The Arabs invaded Egypt in 640 AD, all right? That's when Muslim conquest began in Byzantine Egypt. But y'all can look that up. But anyway, I'm not even going to go into that right now. Either way, that's how we know that rather you think they look like the so-called brown Arabs or the so-called black people, the ancient Egyptians, right? Which, again, they were so-called black people. But let's just for argument's sake say, either way, we know that they were brown to black skin complected. They were not so-called white people, right? So off that alone, we know that the current people could not be how they originally had looked, right? But nonetheless, so let's go to the mistaken identity. Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian, right? Um, Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian. Um, you read about that in Exodus 2 and 7 through 10. I'm just going to read 10. And the child grew, and the child grew, and she brought him onto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. So Moses was raised an Egyptian. In order for Moses to have been raised an Egyptian and nobody said anything, nobody thought he was a Hebrew, that would let you know off, off top that the Egyptians and the Hebrews looked similar. He, obviously, right? Um, now we go to Exodus 2 and 15. This proves it even further because when, when uh, Moses goes to the Midianites, the Midianites just mistook Moses for an Egyptian. We read Exodus 2 and 15 through 19. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now, the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw, drew, and they came and drew water and uh, filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the father and the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood and helped them and watered their flock, right? And, and went, so Moses helped these people out. And when they came to Reuel, their father, meaning mind you, these are Midianites, he said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. So this is what they tell their father about Moses, right? Salakia. This is what they tell their father about Moses. They said, an Egyptian man helped us. That means Moses was, what, dressed up like an Egyptian and he had to have had the same skin complexion as an Egyptian for his seven daughters to mistake moses for an egyptian now we know moses is not literally an egyptian moses is a levite right one of the 12 tribes of israel he's an israelite therefore moses had to have looked like an egyptian let's get another mistaken identity let's go to joseph right joseph was also mistaken for an egyptian we can read about that in genesis 42 and 3 on down so this is genesis 42 and 3 and joseph's tens and Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother Jacob, sent not with his brethren. For he said, lest peradventure mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over their land. And mind you, Joseph is their brother, one of the twelve tribes of Israel. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, 
whence come ye? And they said, For the land of Canaan to, Canaan to buy food. So Joseph knew that those were his brothers. But they did not know that Joseph was their brother. They just thought Joseph was another Egyptian, right? Because, because Joseph was what? He was governor over the land of Egypt. All right, so we go to Genesis 42 and 8. It says, And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. Other versions. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. They just thought that Joseph was another Egyptian. So again, Joseph would have had to have looked like the Egyptians. Right? And we'll get one more example with the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. We go to Acts chapter 21 and verse 37. It says, And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Then you go to Acts 21 and 38. Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. So this guy, once again, he mistakes the apostle Paul for an Egyptian. This is what Paul says, Acts 21, 39. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So Paul corrected him, no, I'm not an Egyptian, I am a Jew, right? Again. Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian, right? So that's that. We got the comparison angle. We could check that off, the comparison angle. Now we're going to focus on the other point of the complexion angle, right? The complexion angle. So let's go to that. Bear with me one second. The skin color, right? So there are scriptures that speak of the skin color of Israelites, of the Israelites as well. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5, right? I am black. But comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So this person, some people say that this is a woman speaking. Some people say that this is Solomon speaking. Nevertheless, this is an Israelite speaking. And they're letting you know that they are black, right? And not only are they letting you know that they are black, they are also comparing their blackness to the tents of Kedar and the curtains of Solomon. Other versions I am dark but lovely. Other versions, I am black and beautiful. I am black but lovely. I am black but lovely. I am black but lovely. So they're saying that they are black in complexion. And they say, as the tents of Kadar. What did the tents of Kadar look like? These are the tents of Kadar. Very dark. Very dark brown or very black. Those are the only two options. And that's what they were comparing themselves to in Songs of Solomon 1 and 5. Then it goes even further to say that they were even darkened by the sun. Song of Solomon 1 and 6. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun that looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. So the sun had blackened them, right? And we all know when a so-called white person gets um, darkened by the skin, they don't become black. They just get a tan. But these are so-called black people, light-skinned black people, who have tan lines, right? They got darker by the sun. Look at these tan lines. Right? That would be the sun looking upon them. But let's get other versions of this. Or let's get other uh, parts to talk about the skin complexion. Lamentations 5 and 10. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Other versions. The famine is black in our skin as though baked in an oven. Our skin is black like an oven because of the burning heat. This is a woman. She shows herself in the wintertime. This is her in the summertime. This is the same woman. Right? This is her being blackened by the sun. Right? Let's get another thing that talks about skin color. We'll go to Daniel 10 and 6. Which reads, His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet, like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude. Right? And the reason they can only see his feet is because back then in the ancient world we wore, we wore long garments our garments went down to our foot our arms were covered the only thing you could really see most of the time despite certain unless it was a certain circumstance where it was work related or something you would see someone's face and you would see someone's feet because we were wearing sandals right our feet were exposed nonetheless so it says like polished brass other versions his feet were like on the polished brass other versions it says burnished bronze burnished bronze right let's go to revelations 1 and 15 which speaks about this as well. And by the way, this is talking about Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Real name, Yahweh Shai. This is who it's talking about. So when we go to Revelations 1 and 15. It talks about this as well. It says, And his feet like on the fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. 
So it says fine brass here. Other versions, it says burnished bronze, burnished bronze, burnished bronze, burnished bronze. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the color of burnished bronze. The finish allows bronze to age naturally over time. Expose the elements. This is the color of burnished bronze. So this was the color of the feet of Yahweh Shai, who the word newly calls Jesus Christ. Let's go to another example. We're going to go to Acts 13 and 1. All right Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Right? So hearkening, boy, Hebrew. So the word Simon is a Hebrew name because he was a Hebrew, right? And he was called Niger, which is really not even pronounced Niger. It's pronounced the N-word, which means black, by the way. Let's go to this Eastern Bible Dictionary. Niger, black, a surname of Simon. He was probably so called from his dark complexion. Niger equals black, surname of the prophet Simon. Niger, now really, once again, it's the N-word. Look, Strong's definition. Ni dot dot ger. Got to say that the right way because of YouTube. Right? Of Latin origin, black. Surname of the prophet Simon. Right? And for those of you that know, don't know, this is so on the nose that the word Niger evolved over time into the so-called N-word. The N-word, first and the child, the N-word is derived from the Latin word for the color black, Niger. Right? The N-word. <laughs> this point blank plain. Right? And for the last point, while I'm here, let's touch on the complexion ready. Let's also touch on the, the verse that talks about being white. It's not talking about skin color. I've done this a million times. So when you go to Songs of Solomon 5 and 10, where it says, My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefs among 10,000 people. Are like, see, it says they're white and ruddy. The white that it's talking about is talking about my beloved is clean. It's not talking about skin complexion. He's talking about my beloved is plain, clean, dry, right? Sunny, radiant, things like that, right? Like when people say you're a clean slate, right? Or a blank sheet of paper. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about it literal. And to prove that, in other versions of Psalm Solomon 5 and 10, it doesn't say white and ruddy. It says radiant and ruddy, dark and dazzling, radiant and ruddy, dazzling and ruddy. Then you have King James white and ruddy. Just wanted to point that out. Right? In other versions, radiant and ruddy, dark and dazzling, radiant and ruddy, dazzling and ruddy, white and ruddy, white and ruddy, dazzling and reddish, dazzling and ruddy, dazzling and ruddy, dazzling and ruddy. Right? So that's that. Now let's touch on this word ruddy. Is ruddy talking about a so-called Caucasian ginger. No, it is not. Right? And the word ready is used four times in the King James Version. Ruddy is talking about red, but it's talking about brownish red. We'll touch on that in a minute. It says, the dark-skinned Hebrews found great beauty in a clear complexion. So even there, he says the dark-skinned Hebrews. The Hebrews were dark-skinned, and they found beauty in a clear complexion. Kind of like now, you have colorism taking place even today, right? They have the light skin versus dark skin paradigm, all that madness. Anyway. So this is what they this is what they say ruddy means when you look it up. But this is not true. Because when you look up a ruddy cow, it is brownish red. A ruddy horse is brownish red. A ruddy goat is brownish red. And a ruddy duck is brownish red. And King David was classified as ruddy. This is the true ruddy, right? It's not talking about not talking about them <laughs> uh, the, the, the the ginger population. But nonetheless. Right? So closing thoughts before I get out of here. This proves that the original Israelites were a dark-skinned people, so-called black people to be specific. Um, dark to dark and brown, I'll say that, because black is not a color. Or black is a color, it's not a race. Um, but the um, Israelites were originally different shades of brown. Right? And I'll say this as well. I've already done videos on this. You will have people out in the world that are Israelites that look like other nations, but their lineage, their seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've already done a video on that, proving that. I ain't really finna argue with that in the comments. So, that is my video for this uh, recording. Proving the Israelites with the Bible only, right? Lord willing, that lesson was edifying. And with that, I say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world commonly calls God. Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nature of Israel, who the world commonly calls Jesus Christ. I want to say Shalom, which means peace. To you people that are out there listening and learning. To you brothers that are doing this work in truth and sincerity. And to you elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. I'm going to go ahead and close on out and get up on out of here. I'm out. Gone. Shalom. Peace.